Hello everybody and welcome back to Writer's Block, the channel where I help you to plan, write, edit and publish your novel. My name is Joshua Bennett, author of this book right here, and today we're talking about what writers can learn from Pokemon Go. Before we get started, I'm all about giving great practical writing advice, so if you're serious about writing a book, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. Now let's jump straight into it. Pokemon is such a nostalgic piece of art for so many people. It's been on the air for the last 20 years, airing before kids go to school. So it didn't come as much of a shock when Pokemon Go was released that it took off with such speed and ferocity, and everyone became instantly obsessed with it. Now how can we use that same formula to make the same thing happen to your book? Well, make sure you watch to the end because all of these points are exactly what Pokemon Go has utilized. So if you want to see the same success, make sure you watch till the end of this video. Firstly, tapping into the nostalgia market. Nostalgia is such an amazing tool for selling anything to anybody because people, when they have nostalgia, stop thinking with their heads and start feeling with their heart. They ache for a simpler time before 2020 when the whole world was burning and crumbling around them. They ache for a simpler time when they wanted to be the very best, like no one ever was. Dun, 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 dun. And this app, Pokemon Go, gave us the ability to live out and reminisce those childhood dreams of traveling around the planet, having random encounters with Pokemon, catching them, training them, and fighting them. Not only did Pokemon Go tap into this nostalgia market, but it sucked it dry and it has no plans to lose the momentum. It is still going strong after all of these years. So what examples do we have in the book world of books tapping into the nostalgia market? Well, I think there are no better examples than Harry Potter and Ready Player One. Why is Harry Potter so nostalgic? And why do grown-ups love it? It's because at some point in everyone's lives, they all yearn for the simpler time of going to school, just seeing your friends every day and just having fun with the people around you, having no commitments, having no stress in your life except for that of school. Everyone yearns for those simpler times at some point in their life. Everybody is nostalgic for the simplicity of school. And then when you throw magic into the mix, it only makes it that much better. Why is Ready Player One such a great example for nostalgia? It's because the book and the movie tap into two different nostalgia markets. The book taps into the nostalgia of people that would now be in their late 30s or early to late 40s. The people that played the original video game consoles. The people that were old enough to appreciate when the first computers came out. And the people that saw the old great movies when they were in theaters. When I read the book Ready Player One, I enjoyed the book, I thought it was a good book, but a lot of the nostalgia was wasted on me because I was not alive or I was not old enough to experience the things that they talked about, the older video games, the movies, the first computers. I wasn't alive or I wasn't old enough to really appreciate those things. So the nostalgia of the book was wasted on me, but I still enjoyed the story, but the movie tapped into the nostalgia of people that were a little bit younger, people that played the original next generation consoles with a much higher focus on games like Halo. Next, we're gonna look at trend chasing versus original content. When you're writing your book, it can be a very daunting experience and you might not know where to start. So it can be really easy to look at what's trending right now and then just try and carbon copy your book to what is trending. The problem with this is one year from now, when your book might be ready to be published, the trends could be completely different. For example, when Twilight came out and it really blew up, the market was flooded with carbon copies of Twilight, whether it be paranormal romance or fan fiction made into a book such as Fifty Shades. Pokemon Go got past this by making a wholly original idea and by building on something that they'd already had, the legacy of Pokemon. They listened to their fans. They listened to them said, I wish that I could be a real Pokemon trainer in real life. I wish Pokemon 
would be in the real world. Who didn't think that as a kid? The creators of Pokemon Go listened to the people and gave them exactly what they wanted, and they succeeded because of it. And there is nothing else like Pokemon Go on the market. Finally, I want to talk about evergreen content. These are the stories that can connect with readers of any age and will stand the test of time. Think about it this way, would a 40 year old and a 20 year old both be able to connect to the themes of your story? Ready Player One again is a good example because I was 25 years old when I read that book for the first time and I remember reading it and thinking if I was just a little bit older I could really appreciate the nostalgia and the themes in this book. And I remember thinking if my older brother read this he would probably love it, he would probably have a blast because he was old enough to appreciate the nostalgia of these things. So Ready Player One is not evergreen content because it relies on the nostalgia of people that were nostalgic for that period. Pokemon Go, on the other hand, has nostalgia on its side because everyone has watched Pokemon from 20 years ago when it first aired all the way to now when kids are still watching it before school. Everyone has that nostalgia for Pokemon. That's why it's so successful and it will be evergreen content for a very long time. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. A nice quick video. Like I said, I'm all about giving writing advice and helping people learn whatever they can from whatever forms of media we can talk about. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you very much.